Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I have a very fun little project that I really enjoyed uh, making it and it involves RFID and it involves writing to a certain text to get the specific information on the text so we can limit its usage and the project i built thanks to rayx for providing the rfid module so let's jump into the details and i'll show you how it works and what it does so this is the module that we are using it's the ryrr20i underscore de and it's a multi-protocol full integrated 13.5 six megahertz RFID antenna module and it can work with uh, multiple protocols including the ISO 1443A which is the uh, the one that works on the 13.56 megahertz and specifically what we are interested in is the ability to read and write into the memory blocks of the specific MIFAIR tags so the, the ones that are branded as ultralight here on the bench i have uh, two types of tags so this one these ones are the mifair classic so with 1k memory it can read the uid but it cannot interact with the memory but however these are small self-adhesive uh, tags that we can use with the module and it's able to to read them currently we don't have anything allowed so whenever we try to scan one of the tags we get the red led lighting indicating that uh, we are not granted access but we can see that later how we can write some data to the tag so we know that we are given access but only for a certain amount of time so let's say you are only given rights 10 times or five times similar in the way how bus tickets work where you load your cart with a certain number of bus rides and then you can use it to go and you know ride the bus three times or whatever or it can be uh, specifically set for example if you are in a gym it can you can pay for 10 uh, entrances and then each time you scan the cart it, it will deduct one of the passes that you have loaded on the cart and beside that the module does support many other features um, currently i don't have any of the other cards so unfortunately we will not be able to test it but it seems to be working just fine and this is the module up close so it has this metal shield over the electronics and you could see that it has the pickup coil on the outside it has few leds to indicate when a card is red and directly out of the box when you connect this you don't need to do any specification or any setup for it or any commands whenever it detects a card being present then it will light up one of the leds and you will get the uid of the card over serial so you can directly implement something like we had in uh, the previous projects where we had an RFID module from Rex that you can check up here where I did the safety switch for my workshop. It has a small connector on the back and it comes with a breakout cable that you can use to directly connect to a microcontroller. Now let me show you what I built with it and how it operates. We have the project running here and I'm gonna also record the screen to, so you could see the serial console. So Whenever I scan one of the tags, we get the ID of the tag. So this is this, um, it, it's still in hex form and we get a section of the memory where it says allowed zero. So indicating that we don't have any allowance on the tag. And if we scan another one, then we should see the uh, similar thing where we get the ID of the tag and also allowed zero. And I'm checking that in the code here. So. I also have a specific function here within the loop. If I send a write command uh, through the serial with followed by the number of writes that I want to add on the tag, uh, let's do that. I'll do write, let's say five. The module will go into a specific mode where it now expects a tag to be present. So it's flash the red LED. And when I pro, uh, add a tag, then it flashes it. And now the, we have several blinks from the green LED. Now, when I scan this tag and it's, you see it here, it says allowed five. Now, the difference with this tag compared to the rest is that 
when I scan this tag now, instead of the red LED, I get the green LED and it says here allowed and it showed me how much it had allowed and it currently deducted one of the credits on the token. So it read what was in the memory, re reduced that uh, by one uh, and saved it back into the memory of the tank. So now we, because we used one of the allowed entrances, next time when we go to scan it, we will still be allowed, but that will be reduced to four. So if we continue doing that, and you see on each of those tries, we get the green LED lighting up. So this would be two, and then uh, we only have one. So I'm using the last one. So the last time the green LED was on, and now if I try to use it once again, it says that it's not allowed because it doesn't have any more usage right on the token. And we can then, uh, if the user pays, we can go and say, okay, then you can have another three rights. And now the red LED flashes again, and we can scan the tag to save those three rights on it. In the meantime, if we try using some of the other tokens, then we will not be allowed. So let's say that on this one, we want to give, I don't know, 10 rights. So now we have an indication that it was written. And if I go and scan that tag, then it will write and the allowed rights will um, reduce as we save them. Similarly, if I go back to the black one, we see that it had allowed three. And if we go and use them all, then after the third time, when we try to access it, it will say that it's no longer valid and won't approve access. The tokens that I'm using are the NTAG 215 variant where you can see that they are self adhesive and you could see that they have a little chip inside and the coil around it. Uh, this one is hard plastic, so it's more of like a coin of some sort uh, that it's not adhesive, but it has the same thing inside. And similarly, all of the big cards also have a certain circuitry around it. Uh, let me try and find the light so maybe we can see that from behind. Yeah, so if I use this flashlight then, and I uh, turned off the lights that I have on the bench, you could see that we have a coil going on the outside with a chip uh, here. And this is what the module uses to induce some current within the card so it can read the UID. And we can demonstrate that if I just place the card close to the module where the ID will be still read. So you could see that it has some ID and I can scan it again. But because we are not able to read the memory of this uh, card and it, uh, because it doesn't have anything saved on it, then we're denied access. But you could still, if needed, you could still build something like I built on my previous project where you could save those cards and then use them to turn on and turn off stuff uh, that you want uh, around the house or within your smart home system. The idea is that, for example, you could allow the, the kids to play, I don't know, five games of pool every day if you have a pool table at home and you could use tags like this so they can release the balls and that's how you know how much uh, they've played. You could load these tags and allow them a certain allowance or you could, I don't know, give specific permission to someone to only do something a specific set of times. If we get a new tag that we've never scanned before, then when we scan it, it will still be disallowed because at the specific uh, memory block where we write our information, there is probably nothing uh, written. So when we scan it, uh, it's just rejected. So anyone coming from the site will first need to go through the process of having the tag allowed for certain usages. And then when it's used, it's going to be allowed. So 
um, this one I had it allowed uh, and currently it says allowed zero so let's add one credit for example starts flashing we can add it and then so this is the one that we added I can scan the other one it will be disallowed but if I scan this time now this one will be allowed uh, but on the next one it won't be so we can only limit the number of usages that uh, are on each specific tag and for example th this can be used in systems like uh, Luna Park like amusement parks where you have different rides and you go and preload your card with a specific number of rights and for example you can have five rights and each time you go then you use one once it's over then you are no longer allowed entrance at the rights and similar systems are being used with the uh, bus uh, systems with train tickets um, any other system like events or concerts and stuff but keep in mind that in this example with basically ignored all the security measures and everything associated with it with just writing simple data to the text and we can now jump into the code if you are interested to to see that now in the code to communicate with the module we are using the hardware serial library and for the module i'm using an esp32 and we have few variables defined one for the reset pin of the module and two for the LEDs and one for the delay in between the commands. At the beginning in the setup function, we initialize the serial communication with the module, which is separate to the serial that we have uh, with the serial monitor here in the Arduino ID. And we need to send few commands in order to prepare the module for command operation. If you are wanting just to read the IDs of the cards, then you don't need to do any of this and the module will immediately communicate any scanned ID. And uh, within the loop function, so I'm gonna skip this, all this for now, and I'm gonna focus just on the else part here. Uh, so this is the part where we are asking for an ID, and if we get any ID, uh, then I'm parsing just the ID so I can print it out, and if we have any ID present, we, it means that we do have card present. I'm asking to read the data. And if we get any data from the tag, then I'm checking that at the specific address, currently this is um, seven blocks, so zero seven. If the data there starts with AABBCC, this is something that I just came up with that I added this as a indicator that it has our data on it then I'm reading the following two character, which is one byte, and I can store from zero to 255 uh, writes on a single card. And this is what I'm reading as the allowed numbers. If the allowed is bigger than one, then I'm updating the, that data to be minus one from what it was, and I'm flashing the LEDs in case that is not bigger than zero. So, it means that we've exp uh, exhausted all of our credits, then I'm flashing the denied, which is basically just the uh, red LED. And also the denied is flashed in any other case where we don't have data or we don't have any um, ID that we've uh, scanned uh, that we don't know of. Uh, there are a few helper commands. So one is the one that sends the command to the module, then we have one that uh, is just reading any response from the module and returning it back as string. Then we have another one where we're just outputting the response. We have the reset function where we trigger by pulling low the reset pin on the module and the approve denied and the flash success functions. And this is the one that writes the update to the card. So it gets the new value, stores it, uh, as the string that we described in hex and then it sends it to the module. Now, if we go back to that initial um, part that I've skipped, so if we write something to the serial, like 
we have with the write command, then if it starts with write, then I'm just subtracting anything that's uh, after the write. So, and I'm expecting to have a number. I know that the, we need to do some more precautions with this and have it a bit more special advice, but for the demo purposes, I think it's okay. And then uh, that data that we got, I'm similarly writing that to the cart. Uh, I'm creating a command to write that into the cart. And we have a do while function where we are waiting at the beginning, we're waiting for an ID. So we are waiting for a card to be read. After we have a card, we are sending the write command. And after that, we are sending the read command to make sure that we actually wrote to the card. If we did, then we are setting this flag to true and we are repeating the same process until uh, that flag is actually true. After which we flash the success message and then it can continue with the normal operation where it asks and scans for new tokens and new writes. Now, this is definitely an interesting and fun little project that you can try at home, uh, trying to read some cards and figure out what you can do uh, with those cards. But if you have any specific ideas or things that you want me to try with the board or if you have any specific project that could use being able to read and write to the cards and being able to read the specific information then let me know down in the comments if you like this video then be sure to like it down below because it helps a lot with the algorithm make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the future videos if you have any ideas and questions leave them down in the video comments i'll have links to everything that i've used in the video down in the video description if you want to check it out and i will see you all in the next one cheers